Okay, last time we discussed the uh, modulation and demodulation process, double sideband suppressed carry. Eh? I want somebody to tell me what is uh, how to understand the modulation in time domain. Can you tell me how to understand you? Can you tell me how to understand the modulation process in time domain? For example, I give you a baseband signal. How are you going to modulate? Anyone else can can say something? Multiply. Multiply. Yes. Okay. Multiply. You give it, give you the baseband signal. You have carry out. You multiply together. That's it. How to understand this in frequency? What does that mean? You the modulation in frequency domain. The white line, uh, not exactly. So I give you a baseband. So I said modulate this. What does that mean? In frequency. Oh, so you shift. Yes, okay, perfect. The word I want is a shift. You shift the frequency to a higher frequency. That's it. Eh? How about the demodulate? What does that mean in time? Still multiply, right? Eh? What is the demodulation in frequency? Still frequency shift, right? Okay, then you just follow the by a low pass filter, you get the baseband signal, right? Uh, today we are going to continue our discussion of a general AF. Or oh, something called double sideband eh, for carrier. Last time we discussed suppressed carrier. That means uh, in the modulated signal, we do not have any carrier information. Eh? So now we have four carrier. That means we have this information. Eh? Now we call that, suppose uh, the baseband signal looks like this. Eh? So this, uh, this is MPA. Uh, if I modulate this with a cosine function, anyone can imagine what is the modulate the waveform of the modulated signal. Uh, it will look like uh, so. This is the uh, baseband information. The modulated signal will look like a. Uh, look at like this. Uh, uh, this thing actually is not here. This is only give us the envelope. That means right, the envelope. So this one here. If you do the labs experiment in the labs, you can only see this uh, cosine function. But the envelope is no longer a constant. Uh, it follows this one here. But the question is, look at this. The envelope of this modulated signal is uh, this one here, and go up. Right? This is the envelope. That's the upper part. The lower part is this right here, then down. So the envelope actually is not equal to, not exactly equal to the baseband information. Even if we have an envelope detector, that means I give you this signal, you get this envelope. This envelope is not equal to this one. Right? So we cannot use the envelope detector to demodulate this signal. So that is the, the problem. Right? So what we do is uh, we are going to shift this one up by some constant. So A plus MT. This MT is large enough that I make sure this one here will always greater than zero. So make sure this one is always greater than zero. Right? I shift this whole signal up by some constant A. Then make sure the minimum in this case is less than zero, but still greater than zero. So this is A plus MT, and make sure it's greater than zero. Then we modulate this signal. Then the modulated signal will look like, a, right? So it will look like, a, look like this. Now let's see the envelope. The envelope is this one. Yep, that equals this one. Right? So if we have an envelope detector, that means 
pass through pass this signal through the envelope detector, this is what we have, and that exactly equals this one. So we can just use an envelope detector to demodulate this signal. We do not need to use a multiply. Right? Any question on this? Right, this one is called a general AM. Right? It's not just the double sideband suppressed carry. This is more general. Uh, if this one is not enough, although we add to an A, but we cannot make sure this one, sometimes this is still less than zero. Right? So for example, we move shift this up by, okay, we still have a little bit like this. Right? Not big enough. Now, this signal will have this. Now we know the envelope is not good. Right? So this one is good, this one is not, and this one is not. I mean, not good means we cannot use envelope detector to demodulate this. We can still use a synchronous detection. That means we can still multiply by cosine function to demodulate this. Just last, we, uh, as we discussed last time. Uh, but we want to use the new method, much easier, just the envelope detection, then this one works. This two won't work. And uh, because we are given this MT, we assume this mi mi minimum here is a negative MP. That means the negative peak value here. Right? Now we are going to define a concept. It's called the modulation index. Modulation index eh, is defined by the mu equals uh, uh, mp over a. So look at this. Is this one the mu? What's the range of this mu? This A is very large, right? At least as, as large as this MP. So in this case, the mu is, greater, uh, is less than zero, less than one. Right? Because A is large. It's larger than MP. So that's why every value is uh, non-negative. Right? So this one is less, uh, less than. How about this one? In this case, this A, the shifted part, is not large enough. This A is small compared to this one. So this mu will be a greater number. And this one less than or equal to one, this one is greater number. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, a is uh, MPO8. This A is small. So what we call this, this is called uh, over-modulation. Huh? This is called over-modulation. Over modulation means we cannot use envelope detector to do it. We need to use a synchronous detection, right? just multiply by cosine function. Okay, any questions about this uh, concept? Huh? I'll give you a baseband signal. This signal may have a negative value. So what you do is uh, you add a constant DC to it to make sure all the values are non-negative. That means at least equal to zero, right? Cannot be negative. Then you just multiply by cosine function. Uh, this is what we have. Uh, the good news is, uh, the benefit for this method is uh, at the receiver, if we have an envelope detector, that means we can only extract this envelope. Then that is the modulated signal. Uh, we do not need to use a multiply by cosine. And the reason is because uh, at the receiver, it's not easy to generate a local cosine function with the same frequency and with the same phase. Uh, so this one is much easier. The circuit is easier, and later time we are going to discuss we need only three components. Uh, and we do not need to use this multiplier, this local generator of cosine functions of everything, so that's very easy. Uh, but what's the uh, cost? Uh, let's see. Uh, Let's discuss the, the efficiency. Right. 
the efficiency. Right? So let's let's free a m in a time domain. We know this one is a e plus m t times the covariant omega c t. That is the modulated signal. Right? A m here means a general a m, right? not double side band suppressed pair. Uh, so this one will be equal to uh, a times covariant omega c t then plus a uh, plus m t times uh, covariant omega c t. Uh, we talking about uh, efficiency in terms of power. So what is the power of the the transmitted signal? Okay, first one we discuss the, the power of the carrier signal. See, this one is the carrier signal. This one is the double sideband suppressed carrier we discussed last time. Right? This is the new well, general AM. This is the double sideband suppressed carrier which we discussed last time. Right? And this is the carrier. So what's the power of this carrier signal? A times cosine omic CT. What is the power of this? equals a squared over 2r, right? right? So 2r, but we assume the r is a one, right? unit length, so just this one. What is the power of the, of the signal? Right? This is modulated, See, this is useful, because here, there's no mt. So that is useless, this part is useful. What is the power of this? Uh, from the first uh, unit, we know how to calculate the power of a uh, uh, sinusoid function. So that after this one is mt, you take the average, uh, you do the integration, find the average, then divided by 2. Right? So mt uh, squared. So this one. Then so what is the efficiency? The efficiency equals uh, the useful power divided by the total power. So this one divided by the sum of these two. Then that one will be equal to mt average squared over a squared plus mt right? average squared. So that's the efficiency. Then you are going to multiply by 100%. You convert this one into percentage. So this is the efficiency of this one. Now we use an example to show how large this efficiency is. Because for arbitrary mt, we need to calculate the average and then square it. Right? Just like here, a square. How about if, uh, if mt equals just, uh, for example, let's see, uh, equals a uh, times a mu times a uh, cosine omega mt. Right? This, this signal, baseband signal, is the sinusoid function itself. So the frequency is omega m. Right? It is m till, amplitude is uh, compared to the a, it is mu. Why is it is mu? Because the modulation index equals uh, the mp divided by a. Right? That is the amplitude of the baseband information. Right? So that one equals uh, mu times a. So this mu here is the modulation index. So we directly write this one equals this. So if m t equals mu a times cosine omega t, then what is the efficiency? The efficiency, we just plug this one here. This is m t, right? This is m t every. Plug into here. So what is this? This one will be equal to mu squared a squared eh? over a squared plus uh, this uh, squared average is mu squared a squared. Uh, then we simplify a squared is raised down, so it's mu squared over 1 plus mu squared. This is the efficiency. This is supposed to be there's a half here, right? There's a half here, there's a half here, right? So that, that's a two, there will be a two here. 
because uh, still a squared over 2. So that's why the mu squared a squared over 2. Right? Make sense? Because the, the power for the cosine function is a squared over 2. So this amplitude here equals mu, mu a, so it's still mu squared a squared over 2. That must be divided by 2 here, right? Same thing here. So that might be mu squared over 2 plus mu. For proper eh, general AM, this mu must be less than 1. Eh? The best case is this one equal to 1. So what is the maximum efficiency here? For example, mu can be equal to 0, right? If mu equal to 0, then this efficiency equals 0. That means mu equal to 0. We do not transmit any baseband information. So that all transmitted are the carrier signals, the user list. So the efficiency equal to 0. The best case is uh, when mu equal to 1. So when mu equal to 1, this is a 1 square, this is 1 square, this is 2. So what's the efficiency? One third. Eh? So the maximum, uh, the maximum, uh, max, that is equal to 1 third, which means equals to 33%. Uh, in conclusion, if we want to use uh, the general AM to transmit the baseband signal, if the baseband signal is a sinusoid function, then the maximum efficiency is only one third. The other 67% of power is wasted in this carrier signal. So that's why usually we do not use this method in real life because the efficiency is too low. Why we still discuss this? We already mentioned the modulation, the modulation process is very simple. The circuit, we have only need three device, uh, uh, element, component. So very simple. But uh, the cost is, uh, as the transmitter, you need to use a large power to pass this, because your efficiency is very low. OK. Uh, let's see. How to do this? Uh, how to implement this? How to to make this? That is what we want. How to make this one? Anyone have given me skin? I ask you to do this general AM modulation in labs. Huh? I'll give you the baseband signal. How are you going to Im implement this? Anyone? Eh? Everybody go to the lab. Eh? I'll give you this information, my voice. I want you to modulate this. Based on this uh, formula, you design a lab how to do that. Multiply, yes. Before the multiplication, you need to shift. add, shift this one. Eh? So easy way is, uh, okay, so suppose this is MT, I'll give you the signal. What you do is, uh, how to add A? A is a DC component, right? So you need to add a factor like this. Eh? Then, this signal, you use a, a multiplier here, and then the other side is a, a cosine omega C T signal. Then this is motivated signal. Very straightforward, right? <laughs> MT plus A, then multiply by cosine. Huh? We should be able to figure this out. But this is good, huh? but it's not the best. Uh, we do not use this one because this one is too complicated. You have this, you have this, you need to have this. So not good. Right? We don't use this method. What we use is, uh, eh? look at this. We have this signal, eh? this one here, and we have this signal, and then we pass through this, and this one here is MT. This one here is C times cosine omega CT, and pass through this, 
we are going to have a resistor, then we are going to have a low pass filter here. Uh, low pass filter. Then the output signal looks like this. Right? This is a low pass filter. Now we are going to use this method. What is this? MT. We are given I so positive negative. And C times the cosine of CT. You need to have the carrier signal, right? right? So this is here. You add these two together. Add these two together, you just uh, connect this in a series. Right? Pos negative here, positive to negative. So that's it. You do not need to use the error. You just uh, connect these two together. Right? Then you pass through a diode here. And we definitely have a resistance here. This is uh, the input impedance of this uh, low-pass filter. And the followed by low-pass filter, we claim we get what we want. Huh? That is the practical circuit we are going to use. But the question is, how do we know this one is correct? Huh? How do we know this one is what we want? So we need to prove this. This and this, right? So we have MT, so I can prove, prove our implementation is correct. So MT plus C times the cosine omega CT, this is no problem, right? So we know we add these two together. What is this diode? Okay, now we need to make sure this one is very, very large. This C is very, very large. That means this signal, the polarity of this signal, the sum, is controlled by this C only, by this one only. Right? So for example, C cosine is like this, right? very large. Your MT is small, right? like, like, like this one here. You add this two, the variation is only on the top. So that means positive or negative compared to this side, it depends only on this part. Because right? this is large. Does it make sense to you? For example, if you have a very big ceiling eh, in the back, $1 million, now you earn only, for example, $100 each day. So your property eh, depends only on the bank deposit. Your $100 each day doesn't affect a lot. Does it make sense? So we want this one to be very big. So the variation here does not affect the polarity at this point. Make sense? All right. That means if C, if this one is, po is because this one is a cosine function, at the positive half cycle, this one will pass, will conduct. At the negative half cycle, this one will close. So this one is like an electronic switch to control this one here. Okay? So this one, pass, uh, stop, pass, stop, or on, off, on, off. So what is this? Electronic switch. switch. How to represent an electronic switch? You use this one, right? One, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Rectangle post train. Now, you are very familiar with this one, right? We like this thing. We look at this, it looks like this one. This is in time domain. Mathematically, what is this? Your homework number one. What is this in your eyes right now? It is a bunch of cosine functions add up together, right? There's a DC component, in our example is half, then cosine omega ct plus cosine 3 omega, CT, uh, omega t then plus half. So this one actually is uh, multiplied by this, uh, this is a rectangle post chain here, right? but this one equals a half, suppose the duty cycle equals 50%, then plus uh, 2 over pi, eh, 1 third cosine omega ct plus uh, minus 1 fifth cosine 3 omega ct then plus 1 seven so cosine 5 omega ct and so on, infinite terms. Still remember this, right? <coughs> right? Now look at this. This one times this. This one is not here anymore. This one is replaced by this thing. Eh? And if we expand all these terms, we are going to find there's one term that exactly is equal to this. So that's it. 
Uh, definitely we have all other terms, uh, high frequency, that's why we need a low pass filter. So after the low pass filter, we only pick the first several terms. So this term and this term. That's it. So we use our theory uh, to guide us to design this simple circuit for general AM modulation. And we prove this one, this is true. So there's a, the term is, uh, I will write out, so there's a C over 2 cosine omega CT, then plus, uh, the next term is 2 over pi MT times the cosine uh, omega CT, then plus some other terms. Uh, after the low pass filter, we only pick these two terms, and all others we just throw away. Right, see, this is a cosine function here, A equals half C here. Right? And we have a MT times the cosine omega CT, which is this term. With some gain here, this gain is 70%, okay, 0 0.7, less than that. But we don't care the amplitude. Does that make sense? Right, in summarize, instead of the Direct implementation, this one, uh, this one, multiply this, uh, add to this, then multiply by this cosine again. Instead of use this method, uh, we use this method. This one here, add to this. Pass through a diode then with a low pass filter. And the output of the, the filter is what we want. Right? So we prove we prove that our method is correct. So next time you just use this uh, this uh, diagram. Right? Any questions on that? It's good. Okay. Now let's look at this circuit. Huh? This, this, and this. We said this one is a low pass filter. Anyone can tell me what is a low pass filter? Can you implement a low pass filter? That means that only low frequency can pass, high frequency will be gone, will be cut off. RC circuit. Right? RC in parallel, that is low pass filter. Right. So we have this, right? first one. We make this uh, low pass filter. Uh, this is a low pass filter, R and C. Why? Because this is your input here, right? This is the output. Right? If your frequency is very low, for example, DC, this one is uh, open, right? For DC signal, this one is just open. This one is not here. This is open circuit. So the output equals the input. So all the input pass through to output. How about for very high frequency? For example, frequency is uh, like a gigahertz or something. This one, the resistance of this is a very small or very large. Uh, and the resistance of this one will be very small for high frequency. So this one is very close to a short. Right? Assume the frequency equals infinity, then this one is a short. This is short, what is your output? Yeah. Zero, because this is a short, there's no output. So that means a high frequency cannot pass, low frequency can pass. So this why. RC parallel is a low pass filter. Okay. So after this one, we already have R here, then this one you just use a capacitor, that's it. And it looks like there's a box here, but after there's only, you can use only capacitor. Right okay. now we copy this circuit, R and C, and there's a diode here. Okay. This part is a low pass filter. This is a diode. Right? So these three components combined together, connected like this, is called an envelope detector. Right? 
envelope detector. That means it will detect the envelope. For example, if you have a modulated signal like this, you pass this signal to the input. At the output here, can you imagine what we have? We see this one is the envelope detector. That means detect the envelope. If the modulated signal looks like this, what do you expect at the output? It will look like this. This is the envelope. Instead of this high frequency oscillations, give us only the envelope. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'll give you another example uh, to make sure you understand this. For example, if this one is uh, a times the cosine or mu c t, this one is q, right? Uniform amplitude, this is the A times the cosine or mu c. What output at this point? Or DC volt. Just DC voltage. What's the amplitude? A, right? Envelope. Envelope is quite big. Okay, perfect. <coughs> Any questions on this? The envelope detection, you said, can give us the, uh, the envelope. How do I know? Uh, I just said, okay, this gives us the envelope. We need the proof, right? So you said this circuit is so easy, yeah, that we can see only three components. How do I know the output here is only the envelope of here? Uh, we need a proof. So what we do is here, so every, Envelope detection is uh, uh, the input here is the modulated signal. What is the modulated signal here? How to, to write the modulated signal in time domain? A plus MT times the omega C T, right? So this one is the modulated signal we received at the receiver. Huh? We claim that one at the receiver, you just use this three component, you can demodulate this signal. Uh, let's see if this is true. Huh? This one, modulated signal, we received at the receiver, I put here. Huh? Again, we said A is large. Right? So, the polarity of this signal is controlled only by A times cosine omega CT. So again, this is electronic switch. So this thing will be on, off, on, off. Right? Then that means this one input multiplied by this one, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, which, what is this in your eyes? Right? A lot of cosines. Cosine or sine functions add up together, right? The first term is DC, right? So half plus lots of things. And plus uh, the next one is uh, uh, you memorize this, right? Cosine, cosine what? Omega CT. Omega CT minus one fifth. In the first homework, you already implemented this, right? If you try this one, then you know. We are talking about okay. So then three omega c t then plus one seven times so there are a lot of terms. So are we repeating this to here? No. Why? Look at this one. Both multiply by this uh, electronic switch, but the first part is different. This one is m t plus c cosine. This one is the modulated signal. So this is different. So that one is at the transmitter for modulation. This one is at the receiver for demodulation. This part is the out part, the output of this one here. Does it make sense? So at the receiver, you use this one uh, as the transmitter. We use this one, multiply with this. Then we follow by low pass filter. We get. Uh, the first of the two terms, which is this, which is this. Eh? Now, you use this again, 
to multiply this again. Looks like multiply, but actually you just follow by this one. So this is the beauty of this simple circuit. You multiply this, and then you use a low pass filter. Now let me I let somebody tell me. What do we expect here? What do you want at this point? This one multiply this, then followed by low pass filter. What do you want? If you can tell me correctly, I'll give you half bonus point. Uh, you cannot get lost, right? You need to know what we are we are working. So what do we? This is happen at the receiver side. Eh? This one is the receive modulated signal. Multiply. So we multiply by this one and followed by low pass filter. Do not do the math first. Okay. Now you tell me what do we want? The envelope, which is the envelope, yes, which is uh, MT, right? Okay, yes, A plus MT. Eh? Good, you got the half point, right? That is what we want. Because this is the demodulation process, right? right? So you multiply this with all this one, then I don't want to bother you with all these uh, uh, details. You just expand this, then take the low frequency part, you find, okay, yes, we have this term. That, that's it. So that is the demodulation process. Uh, we get A plus MT. You just subtract A to get Yes, perfect. I just try to ask you, okay? This one is really what we want, right? We don't want A. A is uh, at the very beginning of this one, this thing, we don't use this. Uh, the A is uh, make sure we can use envelope detection. Uh, A must be large enough that we can use this one. If A is small, then we cannot use this one. That's the only purpose for A here. A is not the baseband information, it's useless. There's no information in A. So we need to cut off A. How to cut off A? Uh, this one is uh, usually is a uh, AC, right? Because for example, my voice that's oscillating, so AC, see, this one is DC. So how to cut off this DC from this uh, combined AC and this? High pass filter, yes, that's one. This is one way, okay? So what is high pass filter? You just tell me one component. You should know this. Right? When you design linear amplifiers with several stages, stage one, A1, A2, A3. What is in between? Mix. Eh? So remember yes, yes, three eleven or something. This one you design empty first. The gain of this one is A one, right? Okay. So suppose this one equals uh, twenty dB. Right? Now you need to design the second stage. This one is uh, for example A two equals thirty dB, and maybe you have another one. When we connect these two stages, usually we do not connect directly like this. Instead, we are going to have something in between. The mix. The mix? What do you mean mix? The mixer. The mixer. No, this is a cascade connection. So theoretically, you can directly connect this one. Right? This one multiply this. In absolute value. In our game, this one is 20 dB, this is 30 dB. You cascade, that means in dB, we add. So the total gain is 50 dB, right? Still remember this? From the first lecture, this one 100 dB means uh, the gain equals 100 times. 30 dB means uh, 1,000 times. So you cascade this two, the total gain is uh, 100 times 1,000, so equals 100,000. In another word, equals 50 dB. Right? So you can multiply this two, or you can add this two. 20 plus 30 equals 50. Now, theoretically, you just connect like this, output to the input. But uh, engineer, all right? So when we do this, there's something in between to cut off the DC component. What is it? Anyone? Okay, add a negative DC, but how do you know this equals 10 or 20? That's DC you, you need to change, right? But if I tell you this 10, then you add a negative 10. Okay? But how do you know this one? This one can change. 
High pass filter, yes, you ever said this, but what is it? ARC, so oh, that is uh, too lossy. The ARC is give you a loss. Uh, ARC. Uh, close, very close. Anyone? We need only one. The closed loop, sir. Half point. Half resistor. Huh? RS. RS, I already give you a hint. Only one. <laughs> resistor, if you resistor. Resistor won't cut off this DC, right? This DC is still passed. There's no capacity. Okay. You're faster than that. Anyone who is here? Alright. Capacitor. When you design a circuit, you know you need to put a capacitor here, right? The purpose is to cut off the DC from the output here. Cut huh? the couple or something. No matter what. The DC component only stay here, cannot pass through this. Make sense? Because usually we said that this input must be a AC, AC signal. We usually we do not amplify a DC signal. <coughs> so this one, you need to use this one. Right? Okay. Does this make sense? So what we have here? This one. Then this A will be gone. So now what you hear? This one is we are going to call empty. Right. Let me draw on more details. What is the wave form at this point? If let, let, let's draw this in, right. what we see this on oscilloscope. This one will be equal to this one, right? This is a modulated signal. This signal wave form is at this point. Make sense? That is a general AM. A plus MT times the cosine. This one. What is the signal at this point? Right. So what is the signal at this point? This one is a on, oh, on, oh. That means we only pass positive signals. We will cut off negative signals. So this part will be gone, right? So this signal here is, uh, is this one. Make sense? It's good, right? Because all this negative will be cut off by this, this style. We only have this, uh, this, 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 and this. It's like a rectifier. Eh? Now this is the low pass filter. Low pass filter that means we only pass the low frequency. What is the low frequency DC component in this signal? There's no this envelope. Envelope you only imagine, right? So this is the signal. So the DC component will be look like this. This is the DC component, right? So at here, this signal will look like a, like this, like this DC component. Good. Right. Now, this one pass through this, then the A will be gone. So we are going to, uh, if the A is, so this one here is A plus MT. A will be gone, that means we shift this waveform down by A. Right? So what we have here is just like this. Right? So this one is just empty. Any question on that? So we have a general AM, which means in the, in the modulated signal, we need to transmit the carrier signal. Eh? That's why there's an A cosine omega CT. It is transmitted along with this. Uh, this part is called a double side band suppressed carrier. Eh? <coughs> this one is the carrier. So add up together, we call double side band for carrier, eh? or just the general AM. 
at the beginning, so generally m. So these two add up together equals this. The purpose for this one eh, is uh, if your A is good enough, then we can just use a very simple envelope detection to demodel this. Instead, with this multiplier, a lot, eh, lot of trouble. Eh, so we can just use this one. The bad thing, eh, bad effect for this one is uh, the efficiency is uh, extremely low. Eh? The best case is uh, only 33%. So usually maybe just less, is 20%. That means most of the power is wasted on this A. Does that make sense? All right, now we know this, the, the good thing and the bad thing of this method. Where do you want to use this method for communication? Point, point communication, broadcasting, or some others. Any, where do you want to use this system? For example, eh? point to point, that means I have a transmitter, you have a receiver. I only communicate with you. Do you want to use this method? Yeah, sure. The good news for you is you use a very simple demodulator. So your part, your receiver part is very simple. You cut a loss, eh? you save or something. The bad news for me is I need to use a lot of energy. Transmit wirelessly. That costs much, much more than what you, you, you save. So if I use uh, point to point communication, this one is definitely not a good candidate. We don't want to use this one. You see one dollars, I will spend ten dollars more. Does that make sense? Okay, so where should we use this? Broadcasting. Broadcasting means okay, I transmit the all view receipt. So I just uh, spend ten dollars more for this. Uh, increase my power to transmit, but everybody you, of you will save one dollar, but the broadcasting, right? Population is a lot, so everybody save one dollar, then save a lot. So the whole system will still save money. Does it make sense? So usually this one is used for broadcasting. Okay, now we finished our discussion of AM and general AM. In summary, we have baseband information MT, we multiply by cosine function with some frequency, and we use this called modulation, then as a receiver with the modulation. No matter if we use synchronous detection, that means we time the cosine again, or easier, we use envelope detection. Eh? We don't need to use the multiplication, we don't need to generate locally the cosine function that can use this one. But anyway, in common, both methods transmit only one baseband signal with one frequency. Eh? We always say you have only MT, you use cosine or mix CT. Eh? Now, we want to increase the efficiency. The question is, can we transmit two signals at the same time with the same frequency? Right? For example, you have M1 T, my voice, right? you have M2 T, your voice, we add up together, then we times the cosine omega C T. Right? Add up together and multiply the demodulation. This is a modulation process. Transmit your receive. Your receive, you demodulate, you get this one, right? Can you, can you separate these two? Add to the receiver? <coughs> You cannot, right? It means, yeah, I can. Your voice, my voice, we can, trust, uh, we can separate. How about this one? I transmit 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. You transmit 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. We add up this together. Huh? What we have is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, you transmit. At the receiver, you receive 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. How do you know I am 1, 0, 1, 0? The other guy is 0, 1, 0, 1. Cannot transmit because they are in the same band, same bandwidth. So here, you still cannot transmit, and because these two boys add up together in time, you because they are in the same frequency bandwidth from zero to ten dk. You, you cannot, you don't have any low pass, whether high pass or band pass to separate this. You just get a signal that's completely different. Yes, yeah, so common mix, so you cannot separate. So this scale, 
won't work. Looks easy, right? But not work. All right. What I do is uh, I still keep this one. Oh, my brothers, that is the we discussed last time, right? Double side band surprise carry. Carry. Right? I want this one. And two, I multiply uh, still cosine function, but omega c plus 90 degrees. They still have the same frequency, right? But now there's a 90 degree phase shift, right? So we, for you, they, we just set this one the same function on this. Remember in the first unit, we said the cosine function and the thin function are orthogonal to each other, right? They have the same frequency, but they are orthogonal to each other. So that means we can use this method right, for transmission, two signals at the same time and with the same frequency. Frequency here is omega c. Frequency here is omega c. The only difference between these two is they have a 90 degree phase shift between this. But we can use this method. Okay? So this one is called a QAM, a quadrature amplitude modulation. Uh, in this class, we use uh, the carrier signal, we always use a cosine function. Okay? Some other reference book, uh, textbooks, they may use a uh, uh, always use the same function. So, for example, we said mt times the same omega c, cosine omega c. Uh, mt times the same omega c t. Uh, they can use this one, doesn't matter, right? But in our class, we always use the cosine. Right? So, what we call this term, this is called uh, in phase. Uh, because this is the same as the cosine function, so this is called the in phase term. And the other one is called uh, what is it called? We call other term quadrature, right? That's a quadrature. Uh, this is a in phase term, but we call this one in phase channel because we have two channels. I see, right? uh, channel, right? See. right? And this is called a quadrature channel. These two signals add up together because the cosine and the are orthogonal. So we add up together, later time we can separate this. Alright, All right, so that we propose this method is called QAM. This is a time domain modulated signal representation. Alright, let me ask a question. Can you implement this in your labs? Can you draw the diagram to implement this? Okay, everybody go to the lab. Eh? Take what, whatever you want. Eh? M1, M2 are both baseband signals. Eh? We have our signal generator. Can you implement this? Yeah. Yes, right? It's not very difficult, right? What is this? This is just the double sideband suppressed carry, right? So what we have is a okay, is multiplier. Right? We use this one. So M1, and this one here you need to use a signal generator. Right? We say this one is a, a cosine function, cosine omega c t. These are two multiplied together. Right? We get this one. Here. Make sense? All right. Now this one, I need the same function. Uh, you do not need to gen generate the same function again. So you just use this one shift by negative 90 degrees. Right? This is a cosine, then this one will be the same function. Right? Cosine omega ct minus 90 degrees equals the same function, right? Okay, so this one. Now, we still use a multiplier here, and this signal is uh, the second piece by F2. Right? So this multiplier together, that's give you the quadrature channel. In phase channel, right? This is a quadrature channel. What next? Add up together, right? These two channels add up together, okay? What is this? This is a time domain Q E M C. That's easy, right? 
Yes? Yes or no? You can do this by yourself, right? Hello, yes? Yes, okay, good. Next one. I always want to make sure you we, we are clear what we are doing. We discussed this one, modulation and uh, implementation. What's the next topic? Huh? Demodulation, right? Right? So we you give me yeah, this is in the transmitter. You give me these two signals. Uh, I derive this theory so I know I can use this diagram to get this QEM thing. I can transmit no matter with a keyboard or wirelessly. Most probably wirelessly transmit this. Now at the receiver, you receive this signal, which is this. How do you mo demodulate this? Anyone can give me a guess or ideas? I'll give you the lecture notes, right? The purpose is for you to preview, right? That means before the class you, you need to read that one. So you don't need to understand everything, right? But at least you know the idea. So how to demodulate this? You already get this signal, right? You receive this one. What do you want? You want M1 and M2. That is the purpose for demodulation, right? The question, so the question is, once we have this, how to obtain M1, how to obtain M2? All right, let's recall. If you received only this one, huh? not this term, how can you get M1? Multiply, right? You multiply by cosine again, this is called a synchronous detection, which we discovered last time. Okay? Yes, they lose a low pass filter, then we get M1. Actually, it's half M1, but that half doesn't matter, right? Make sense? Now, we receive these two, we cannot separate this. So what we have is, uh, we have QEM, eh? QEM T times, eh? no matter what, we just use this receive to multiply this. Let's see what we have. Uh, we know if we have only this one, then we multiply this, we uh, pass through the loop-pass filter, we get this M1. That's perfect. But now we have these two terms. But we still go ahead with this. Let's see what we have. Right. So this one times this equals what? Right. Right. For better, we, I multiply by two. Right. The, the two is just the, erase the half. Right. If you don't like this, that's fine. Okay. I can pretend this. So what we have is a half right. and one times the cosine squared of t then plus half uh, m2 oh there's no half here right now uh, m2 t times sine omega t times the cosine omega c yeah? now we use trigonometry this one will be equal to half uh, one plus cosine 2 omega c t uh, times m1 then plus half uh, sine 2 omega ct then times m2. Right? Then this one will be equal to half m1 then plus half m1 times the cosine 2 omega ct then plus half m2 then times the sine omega ct. Right? All these are just Derivation, eh? What do we want? Yeah. We want M1 or M2, right? Oh, M1 is here. That's good. M1 is here too. But what is this? This is a modulated signal, right? So this one will be the spectrum of this shifted to the very high frequency. Make sense? How about this one? M2, oh, this one's M2 here. But this one is also shifted to the very high frequency. So if I draw this, this one is, looks like a low frequency, like this here. Right? So this part is this. Where's this part? So this is M1, capital M, because it's spectral. This one is centered as 2 omega c and negative 2 omega c. Right? So that one will be equal to this and this. The amplitude reduced to half. 
you are still with me, right? Uh, you need to review the lecture notes, right? Otherwise, you're going to have trouble. So this one here. What's this part? This part is also centered at uh, plus or minus 2 omega c, but the spectrum is m2. So we have another part okay, added to this, another added to this. Uh, so that one is uh, uh, m1 plus m2. This one is m1 plus m2. Looks like we cannot do anything at this point, because m1 and m2, they, they just mix together. We cannot use any filter to separate this, right? But the good news is here, right? we can use a low pass filter to get this one. And we just forget this one. Because we cannot do anything to this. We cannot separate this. They are in the same frequency band. Make sense? All right. So that one will be equal to half m1 t right, after a low pass filter. We only have this term. This one is gone, this one is gone. These two terms are at the higher frequency band. Okay, that's it. So this one is called, uh, we get only m1, m2, sorry, we cannot get it. Huh? So this is called uh, I channel uh, demodulation because we can only get M1. Okay, next one is a Q channel, right? We still need to get M2. So the next one is a Q channel demodulation. We still have this signal. So, anyone have an idea how to, to deal with this one? This time I want only this one. Okay? I don't care about M1 anymore because I already have M1. Anyone? Hmm? Omega. Okay, yes. So, use this one multiplied by sine omega c. Right. So, what we have is a phi q a m t times sine. Omega C T. And this one will be equal to okay, half M1 times uh, sine 2 omega C T plus uh, half M2 T then plus half M this M2, okay? M2 T times uh, uh, cosine 2 omega C T. Right? And if we draw the spectrum, this one is in the Low frequency, these two, these two are at the high frequency, still mixed, but we don't care. Eh? After the low pass filter, eh, we get only half M2. So this one will be gone, this part will be gone. So that's it. Easy, right? Yes or no? Get this? No? So now, you need to go to the lab to implement these two formulas. Can you draw the diagram right now? Should I give you a chance to already draw a diagram of this two? We are very good at hands-on skills, right? So you go to the lab, you can do this. I'll give you the formulas. Eh? How to get M1 and M2. Or oh, anyone want to try here? You just draw a diagram like this. But this is for modulation. What we want is for demodulation. Anyone? Okay. Uh, first of all, at this point, what we have is a QEM which is uh, this one, right? Then, we multiply by cosine function here. Then, 
we need to have a low pass filter, right? Then we don't need this anymore. Right. So that one we get a M1. Yes? So that one is the is is the first part. You use this, multiply by this, low pass filter, you get pop M1. Now still the same thing here, right? Still the same signal, but uh, you need to use a same function, that means this one is a 90 degree phase shifter, you get same here, right? that is the cool thing here, right? Get this one, then this one still called a multiply, right? This is multiply, this is still multiply. And we have a low pass filter here, and what do we have here? M2T. So that's it. This is called the demodulation process. Any question on that? A lot of things, right? That's why I give you a lecture notes to let you prove you. Huh? Yes. Go over again how so which one? Which channel? For for the high channel demodulation, how how exactly does M one get separated from <coughs> after we multiply? So this one here is exactly this two, right? Yeah. You multiply this, you do the trigonometry, we get this one, right? That's not not a big deal, right? Now in time on oscilloscope, these three terms are just mixed. We cannot. We don't know directly how to separate this. But we change our angle. We look at this signal in frequency. Right? This one usually, for example, my voice, this is a low frequency from 0 to 20k. Right? So if I draw the spectrum of this, right, this part, it will be centered at 0, just like this one. For example, this is 20k. And no matter what, the other signals, you have binary, so this one just becomes B. Right? Remember the last time we said your omega C must be much, much, much bigger than the bandwidth of here. Now this one is even double this one. So even larger. Right? So what this signal is? Mt times cosine. Recall what we discussed last time. This one is a double side band suppressed camera modulation, right? So that means the spectrum of this part is the spectrum of M1 shifted to the right and to the left, the center of the two omega C. That's the quiz I asked you at the beginning of today, right? You shift this one. So this part is this one shift to a higher frequency. So this shifted to here and shifted to here. So this one is negative 2 omega C, this is a positive 2 omega C. Right? Now this MC is reduced to half, so that, but that's not a big deal. The, we are only interested in it. They are different, they are separa separable on the uh, spectrum. So this is a low frequency, this is a high frequency. If your omega C is large enough, then there is a big gap. So we can just use a low-pass filter, get this. And it means, how about this one? Oh, this one, same function, same function from the Fourier transform, we know they have the same spectrum. Right? So this part is also at this one. Right? Another one, another one, so M1 and M2 mixed at this, M1 and M2 mixed at this part. So we, we can do nothing at this one. But we don't care, because we only care about this one. So you use a low pass filter, cut off this, cut off that. So let them wait. We only need this part. So we get M1. Questions? Good? OK, now look at this one. So the QM is too good, right? We use the same frequency, we can transmit two signals. If this one has no cost, why should we use a 
double size band suppress the carrier, double size band for carrier. Now this one uses only frequency, can only transmit one signal. Now the efficiency is only 50% of this. Why should we use this one? This one should not exist. We can always use QM. Is my reasoning reasonable? Right? What we discussed before is we use one signal, we use one frequency to transmit one signal. Now today we said we can use this one, one signal transmit two signals. And easy. So we resolve, we receive the resources. Cut the cost by 50%. Oh, it's too good to be true. We must pay something. Right? So what is that? I, we have an in um, uh, channel noise. What does that mean? Look at here. You said, once we receive this uh, QM signal, you need to you times cosine ohmic city. How to get cosine ohmic city? This one is in here. We transmit it. This one is in far, far away, the other side. You need to locally generate this, right? You cannot steal this signal like what we do in the lab. So you need to generate this one. How can you guarantee? Because this one here, there's a cosine. How can you guarantee this cosine and this cosine, they have the same frequency and they have the same phase? See? Cosine of this city, cosine of city. These two must be identical. How can you guarantee? This one I generated at here. This one, you generate at your place. How can you make sure? I decide this one. Uh, but as you know mine, you need to generate yours. You cannot guarantee you have the same frequency and the same phase. Well, good news is we have technique that we can guarantee this frequency are the same. Use a uh, fist lock loop. But the phase is not easy. Because if you transmit, you have time Delay, then you have different phase. So that means most probably this one we are you have delta zeta phase. You cannot guarantee this delta zeta equals zero. Okay? Now if you plug this one into everywhere here, you are going to find that this term here will equal to half t times the cosine delta zeta. Multiply by this term. This one we all have times sine delta theta. This one also times. Okay? I actually don't care about these two terms because they are gone. So, but we do have this term. And instead, we have another term, half m two. So let, let me write some. Okay? So I erase all this here. And if we have a discord. This perturbation. Perturbation means you have an extra error here, right? So after the phase perturbation here, for I channel, what we have will be half M1 times the cosine delta theta and plus half M2 times the sine delta theta. Instead of ideally we get this one. Now we have this all this part. Okay? Let's see if we still ideal means this one, this one equals zero. Oh sorry. Okay, I think that's this Perturbation. Okay. Perturbation. That means a little bit of change. Right? So if this one ideally this perturbation, no perturbation, means delta theta equals zero. Huh? Cosine zero equals what? What? Right? Right? So this one is what we want. Sine zero equals what? Zero. Mm -hmm. This one is gone. So that's still this part. The worst case, your perturbation is so large that it exactly equals 90 degrees. That means you change your Cosine into sine, change the sine into cosine. Right? Remember, this is the I channel, right? This one is what we want. If your perturbation equals 90 degrees, what is cosine 90 degrees? Zero. 
So that means this part is gone. What is the sine theory? A uh, sine 90 degrees. One, right? Now you have this one, half m2. What does that mean? You have the wrong signal. What you want is uh, m1, but actually you get m2. Totally garbage. Totally no ways. Eh? That is uh, in the worst case. In the between, for example, this one equals 45 degrees. That means you have m1, you have m2 add up together. So, that's it. So, the cost for this system is you need to make sure this uh, delta theta exactly equal to zero. Uh, otherwise, you are going to have a noise. This one is noise. Uh, because to this, if you reduce the only the amplitude, that is fine, right? You don't care the amplitude. You can use the amplifier to increase this. But the question is, if you, this one is not equal to zero, then you are going to, we are going to have M2 in a wall. That is really bad. Because you make, you, you mix everything. So we call this one in-channel interference. Uh, it's called in-channel interference. Uh, so this is for I channel. How about the Q channel? Uh, Q channel, the same thing. Eh? What we want is uh, we want M2, eh? but now this one will be a cosine delta theta, and for this one here, M1 times a sine delta theta. Eh? Again, in ideal case, delta theta equals zero, this M1 is nothing here, so we have only M2, that is good. 